I'm Dennis Gordon. I do a variety of different uh, art media, but for the last several years I've mostly done woodcuts. And the term woodcut is a somewhat uh, confusing term because it doesn't really refer to the piece of wood. It refers to the print that you get from the piece of wood. So this is kind of a wood plate, and then these are considered wood cuts. Uh, this is an example of one of them that we'll see in a, in a couple minutes. Um, the image is cut into the wood, and the image is actually the negative of what the image is going to be. So in other words, where you're cutting is actually going to be white, and where you don't cut is where the ink is going to go. So on this one, you would take a roller with some ink that has about the consistency of oil paint and roll it on the surface, and then take a piece of paper, put that on top of it, run it through a printmaking press, and you have the wood cut or the print from the wood plate. And sometimes this is where I stop. It's a black and white uh, image and I'm happy with it. Uh, but in many other cases, um, I will start experimenting with uh, getting some sort of color involved with the two. And that can be done in a couple of ways, but the way that most of these are done is where I take this image and don't really do anything more with this piece of paper other than taking a fresh piece of paper, laying it on top of this one, and lightly drawing out some of the shapes. So I'm not going for exact, I'm going more for loose. I then take a couple of small rollers and different relief printmaking inks and just roughly roll on different colors as a background. Again, not really working to get exact uh, paint by number kind of feel, but just a rough, almost woodcut type feel. I then ink up this plate again, put this piece of paper on top of it, run it through the press again, and from here you get to here, which is the final woodcut or print. Um, one other thing briefly that can be done with the wood plate is if you take a piece of paper that is mostly uh, cotton fibers and soak it and get it wet and run it through the press, you get what's called an embossing. So I'm not sure how well that shows up on the video, but you actually kind of get a little bit of a three dimension um, in the, uh, in the uh, print. And then when it dries, it stays that way. So this first woodcut over here is of some oak leaves in winter. And unlike the color process that I just explained, this is done in a somewhat more traditional process where one wood plate would be carved for all the black ink and a separate wood plate would be carved for the other color. So in this case, I uh, print the black plate, let that dry, ink up the other plate with a kind of an orangish brown color, and then print that, take that piece of paper that has the black, put it on the plate that has the orange, run it through the press again, and you have the second color. The nice thing about woodcuts in general is that Unlike a photograph, there's actually a three-dimensionality to it. You kind of have to get close to them sometimes, but it actually pushes the paper into the grooves of the wood a little bit. So you get kind of more of a, a 3D effect than you would with just something like a photograph. Um, this little thing right here just shows that I can do some variety of different woodcuts. Uh, we'll see this one in a second, but sometimes I'll roll on one color and sometimes I'll try rolling on different background colors to see what kind of effects uh, I might like. And in some cases, I'll do what's called an, a, a variable addition of prints where I'll do some of different colors. This next one is of Teasel um, out uh, in kind of a preserve in uh, Superior Township in Michigan. And what I was trying to aim for here with the wood engraving is to get some images real sharp and crisp and then to get some that are kind of fuzzy. Quite often with wood cuts and linoleum cuts, when you make a cut, it's, it's a dramatic line, which is beautiful. It's kind of what attracts me to, to the woodcut process in general, but I thought it would be nice to have kind of a combination of the crispness of the teasel plant with kind of the, the fuzzier background behind it. And um, this is printed on a, a, a more traditional uh, woodcut type paper, it's made with mulberry fibers. 
Uh, this next one uh, is actually um, some woods in an uh, area in Quebec uh, province in Canada. And what attracted me to the image was the shadows. Sometimes I think the shadows running across paths are much more interesting than the, the trees themselves. And um, you know, this was one that we saw on that earlier image where I tried different backgrounds uh, painting. But I always paint the image first on a blank piece of paper like I showed with the uh, cappuccino and then ink up the wood plate and print it on top of that because I want the black ink to be really crisp and strong. If I start trying to fill in color afterwards, it kind of dilutes the, uh, the actual woodcut image. And then this one over here is uh, a path going into um, a park in Ann Arbor. It's called Furstenberg. Um, and I just found it kind of neat to see kind of the little purplish, bluish glow in the early morning and the snow uh, freshly on the limbs and um, just trying to capture some of that soft winter feel. So this is a scene from uh, Giverny or Giverny. I think it's actually pronounced with a with a J map sound. It's uh, Monet's garden area in France. Um, it's not the most popular scene in that area. The most popular scene is this, you know, uh, iconic little bridge going over the stream. But I was kind of attracted to the bamboo woods and the stream kind of going back and the the blues and yellows of the sun kind of glitting in and out. And you can see from this image how when I roll on the background color, which again I do first before I print the image, how I'm not really that exact. Like some of this blue is actually in the leaves and some of the green is actually in the water. But I consider that just part of the looseness of what a woodcut is and it still reads okay. So again when I'm rolling on the color on essentially a blank piece of paper, uh, I'm not that concerned that I get uh, the colors in exactly the right spot. Um, because the woodcut image itself is strong enough to kind of convey uh, uh, what, what uh, the image is. Uh, this next one is uh, of just some waves. Uh, the difference again is like the oak leaf uh, picture that I started with, uh, this is multiple plates. So one plate for uh, the light green and a different plate for kind of the darker blue green that almost looks black in this image. And then this next one is the most involved of all of them. I'll try not to belabor it too much. Uh, it also has a, a background rolled on, kind of the blues uh, going into some uh, greens and, and uh, yellows. But instead of inking the plate up with just black, which is what all the others are, in this case, I inked up the bottom with kind of a magenta, you know, a, a dark reddish color. Um, then went to kind of a greenish black color, back to a reddish color, and then back to a greenish black color. So, you know, rolling the ink on the plate, just kind of rolling different colors as you go along, and then printing that on the already painted background. So this is kind of a, a multiple process. And then this last piece here is uh, reflections in water. Uh, as I mentioned before, I kind of get attracted to the uh, the shadows on the ground and reflections in water, I think they just kind of have a life and interest of their own. Uh, and again, in this case, the background is just, I didn't even draw any image on the piece of paper. I just uh, took some blues and yellows and just rolled on different colors, kind of uh, melded them together uh, to kind of reflect, you know, the blue and yellow in the sky. 
and then ink up the wood plate and print it on top of uh, that background color. So this is the uh, uh, woodcut of the cappuccino that we showed in the very beginning, um, just kind of framed. It's really about the same. If I, if I had the other one over here and you looked at it really carefully, you'd see that it's not exactly the same. And that's because, again, I'm, I'm rolling on the background color. I kind of have an idea in my mind. You saw that I kind of drew out the shapes. I kind of wanted orange in the cup and a bluish color in the spoon. and some brownish yellowish colors in the background so it's the same but it's not exactly the same. Um, a friend of mine got a huge amount of these small uh, wooden frames and um, offered uh, them to me at a, a pretty reasonable price and I thought well maybe I could make some kind of mini woodcuts that I could then sell at a much lower price. So you know the larger ones are more time, more ink, more paper, more cost for a frame uh, but with these smaller ones, uh, you know, it's the ability to sell it for a much lower price. Um, and then what I did is I actually printed the wood plate on a, um, on a piece of archival mat board, which then is just attached to the back of the frame, and then using a laser uh, engraved my name right on the frame since there's not really room on the print itself. Um, so some of these images, like this one, the cappuccino is really the same image as uh, this larger one. Again, kind of the same theme, a little bit orange in the cup, a little bit blue on the spoon, etc. But again, they're all going to be a little bit different. Um, and all of these also have a little hole in the back so that if you wanted to hang these on the wall, that would be something that you could do as well.